Well, hello scrappers, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. Just got back from another pretty epic scrap run. Volume-wise, there's not as much as on some of the previous runs, but I'll tell you what, there is some really, really, really good stuff in here. And it's probably going to take me the better of the part of the day to unpack this truck and show you what I got. Um, hundreds and hundreds of PC cards video cards down here in this bin down here there's video cards there's network cards sound cards all kinds of pc cards you name it hundreds of them um connectors wire this bin is completely full of big lead acid batteries like this and there's a bunch of loose ones scattered out throughout the truck too i've probably got 100 pounds of lead acid batteries anyway you know and the scrapyard buys those I've got computers, I've got printers, ultrasonic units. This place, this this particular client of mine, they tend to sell out a, they tend to throw out a lot of stuff that actually works. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if those ultrasonic tanks work. Got phone equipment. Oh, just just too much, just too much to name. It's 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 incredible. It's all jammed in here. So like I say, it's probably going to take me the better part of the day just to. Uh, Unpack and sort it out. I mean, they got rid of just tons of PS2 stuff. KVM switches, cables, keyboards, you name it. Um, there's all kinds of stuff here. So let me get started unpacking, and uh, I'll show you as I go what I got. Okay, this bin here, which I cannot lift, and it took me, you know, all, everything I had to get it out of the truck. This bin... It's full of mostly slot cards. All kinds of cards. A lot of video, a lot of sound cards, a lot of I.O. cards, firewire, whatnot. Stuff they didn't need in their computers. You know, they'd buy computers from Dell or wherever, and they'd take out the stuff they didn't need in them, put in the specialty cards they did need for their manufacturing process, and this stuff is just piled up for years and years. So, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff in there, too, but this, this bin is mostly PC accessory slot cards. And it is heavy. There's a lot of gold in there, and there's a lot of probably resellable boards, brand new, never used. i got to sort through it. This bin, also very heavy. Yeah, there's some, so there's some junky keyboards in there, but there are a lot of hard drives in there, okay? And there's some cables, and there's some new-in-the-box stuff. I don't even know what it is. I'm going to have to dig through it and see what we got. I'm going to have to drag these bins over there. because This one, especially, is just too heavy. I can't lift it. This bin over here, it just sort of accumulated all kinds of stuff. And again, it's too heavy to lift. I'm just going to have to probably at least partly unload it on the back of the truck. So I can lift it out. I mean, a lot of this stuff, I think, is just going in the recycling. But uh, there's some good stuff buried down in there, too. Yeah, when I get these bins unloaded, finally, I'll give you a look at everything that's inside. But uh, i got to get everything else out of the truck and sort it out first. There's just so much stuff here. Well, we got far enough into the truck now that we can see got a couple of HP servers there, blade servers. Uh... There's a uh, barcode printer. I've had good luck with those. If I can get them working, they're worth money on the resale market. A couple older computers. This computer in the foreground is part of a laser measurement system. I need to look at it and see if it has its uh, cards in it because some of the cards in those laser measurement systems resell for a lot of money. Looks like we've got another VWR stir plate up there. Those resell if they work. Of course, we got two ultrasonic tanks. I mean, 90% of the ultrasonic tanks I pick up from these people work fine. And I resell them for good bucks. So, so I keep going back. There's just some miscellaneous junk here. Slowly get it out of the truck. Well, finally got the truck unloaded. Oh, I would pick today to get up to 90 First really hot day of the year, unfortunately. Let me give you a little bit of a look at what I've got spread out here. I still have some bins to unpack, but I'll give you a quick look at what I got. Uh, this is lead acid batteries over here. Just, I can't even lift this blue bin. 
it's just so full of lead acid batteries. And then these two cassettes right here, got two of them. Each one of those cassettes contains 40 more pounds of lead acid batteries, which I need to get out. Then there'll be some scrap metal. I got another APC UPS there that I need to take the battery out of. So that's just money sitting right there. Scrap here to buy that in a heartbeat. Uh, fortunately, they only had one CRT monitor. I told them I'd take it since they only had one. If they had a lot of them, I'd have had to, I'd have had to charge a surcharge just because they're so hard to get rid of. But I can get rid of one. Not too difficult. Um, a small stack of flat screen monitors. I think there's three of them there. Actually, I think there's a, I think there's a fourth one in the bottom of one of these two bins, too. Um, so I need to check them. Of course, these three I can tell are probably no good because the cases are busted on them or the screens are bad. I don't know about the one in the bottom of the bin. Every once in a while, I get a perfectly good monitor from these people. So, you know, got to check them out. Um, oh, this is a control unit from a large, uh, from a large vapor degreaser. I actually have a video where I disassembled one of these. It's almost all aluminum. It's heavy, too. It's a big, chunky unit, and it's almost entirely aluminum. There's big aluminum heat sinks. The top bottom plates are aluminum. The case is aluminum. It's just the aluminum never ends on those. I've uh, got some phone systems. Uh, power supplies. Uh, now, these, these are seriously heavy power supplies. These came out of uh, industrial machinery. They're built on great big um, aluminum heat sinks, which is nice, but each of them has a transformer that must weigh 10 pounds. So there's a lot of iron and copper there as well as the aluminum. I still need to unpack this bin. I still need to unpack this bin. Got some um, illumination sources here and some ring lights. Now these probably went with some of the microscopes I got on my last trip over there. Uh, probably no good, but if I can get one of the illuminators working, maybe I can fit one of these, uh, ring lights. These are fiber optic. They go back to a, uh, like a quartz halogen light. And then the fiber optics transmit the light up to the ring. I could probably use one of these for, like, uh, close-up photography or something. Use it as a, a ring around one of the lenses on my camera. We'll see. Otherwise, you know, there's some scrap there scrap value there. Uh, PS2 keyboards. Uh, those are getting rare and I think every single PS2 keyboard I've got from these people worked just fine. They've just been obsoleted and they're throwing them out because they're old. Okay, these two ultrasonic tanks over here. This one's broken. This one works. Hear it? I don't know if it's coming through. It's working just fine. I get a lot of working ultrasonic tanks from these people. They resell nice too, let me tell you. Um, of all things, I got a 60 CD changer here. I don't know where this came from in the plant. Maybe they used to play background music. I don't know. Also, I think they let the employees bring in their own e-waste and throw it in the bins out there. So maybe that's where this came from. I don't know. I don't know if it has any value to it. I don't know if it works. So, uh, I don't know. I'll have to look into this. Look to see if this particular model of Techniques uh, changer has any value. If so, I'll test it out and see if it works. Uh, over here, computers. Computers. Um, this is a laser measure, part of a laser measurement system. Nothing special as computers go. It's just like an early Pentium system. But um, it's all aluminum. The case is all aluminum. Everything you see here is aluminum, and it's heavy-duty aluminum. And this card, this card's worth close to a thousand dollars resale. So I got a lot of lucky boy there. It's got the expensive card in it. Uh, I've got a couple, uh, three, four other computers over here. These are Pentium threes over here. These two, and um, they seem to be fully tricked out with drives and stuff. I might just see if they boot up. Because I've gotten a few older computers from them that boot up Windows 95, Windows 98. They are great for retro computing. Um, of course, I've got over here the PS2 keyboards, which I'll need with these. Although they I'll have to turn them around and look. They might have. Uh, they might be new enough to have USB slots. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I get a lot of older working computers from these people, and I have restored some to really beautiful condition. 
And uh, they make great gaming computers, retro gaming computers. Uh, a couple other computers here. Yeah, it's a, it's a, like a, what do we got here? It's like Optiplex, Dell Optiplex, probably like a Core 2 Duo or something. I get a lot of them from them. Um, and then some sort of no-name computer here. It's got some, got some interesting cards in it. I need to look and see what they are. Uh, the computer itself is probably nothing special. It'll probably just get scrapped out. I've uh, got a couple laser printers. The one at the bottom is all busted up and falling apart. Um, and I can also tell, because it had a bunch of paperwork in the output tray, that they were troubleshooting it. So it's probably junk. This one up here, I don't know. It, it looks to be in pristine condition. I may actually try this one out and see if I can get it working. Um, you know, we print a lot of shipping labels and stuff here. So... This could actually be a good printer for us if I can get it up and running. It might have a little resale value, too. I'll have to look into it. Usually they don't, and they're kind of a pain in the butt to ship because they're so big and heavy. But I'll have to research it. Uh, speaking of printers, I've got one, two, three of these big monster tank-like label printers. Um... And these are worth uh, buku bucks if I can get them working, especially the zebra here. The zebra is the is the elephant in the room. This thing is worth some big bucks if I can get it working. And it has a little bit of media inside, which is nice. I can actually test the thing. I think I have some transfer media, too, because it looks like there isn't much. But there's lots of labels in there. So, uh, yeah, it's a bar Zebra is a barcode label printer for shipping and, and labeling products and stuff. Very much in demand. Um, I have been able to resell these when I can get them working. And, I don't know, four out of five I get from these people I can get working. I don't know about these off-brand ones. This one looks pretty beat up, and it's an off-brand. This one's pretty beat up, and it's an off-brand. I don't know, might just be scrap metal, but this zebra, I'm going to try hard to get it working, because, yeah, it, it's it's worth bucks if I can get it up and running. I'll advertise it on, like, Facebook Marketplace, and it'll sell really quickly. Some business will need it. So, I got two of these HP ProLiant servers, blade servers. Um, they have, each have a full complement of hard drives, although I told them I would make sure that the data is destroyed on them. Um... But let's take a look under the hood here. Look at all the RAM sticks installed in there. Dual hot swap power supplies. Uh, it looks like we got two Xeon processors installed. Um, you know, some of the spare parts out of this thing will resell. But you know what? I might just for funsies try booting one of these up on Linux or something. Just to see if I could make it run. I mean, for a personal computer, it's pretty awesome to have your own server that could handle, you know, a small corporation. But, really, they are so loud. you got to have it a couple of rooms away between you behind closed doors. Otherwise, it's just, ooh, too loud. Um, and i got two of these. i got two of them. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they work. I think they're probably just too old. They've been uh, obsoleted out. And just sitting around for a little while. So, uh, cool. Hey, if nothing else, each one is about 60 pounds of scrap metal. And that's after I remove the good stuff. That monitor works. doesn't have a stand, which kind of limits its usability, but I can use it to test some of the computers I got, which I will do later. This printer, guess what? It works. Let's see if we can get it to print something here. Print supply status page. Let's do that. Printing supply status. All I had to do is put some paper in it and plug it in. Will you look at that? Look at that. 90% remaining on the ink cartridge. And it works. That is some crisp print too. Very nice. Very nice. So I've got this uh, rack mount Lumetrix computer here. It's an i5 industrial for you rack mount computer check it out it boots up to windows xp 
which they must have seriously downgraded whatever operating system originally came with this thing for XP. I know a lot of older industrial equipment still runs on XP, needs XP. So what I'll probably do is blow out their, uh, their uh, XP installation here, put Windows 10 on this thing, and uh, see if anybody wants to buy a 4U rack mount industrial computer with an i5 processor in it. I see i3 selling on eBay. I would think i5 would be more desirable. And I'll be selling it without the $1,000 data acquisition card it came with. That, that I'll be selling separately on eBay. So this is one of the um, HP Pentium 3s I got. And uh, it looks like it's missing its hard drive, which makes sense. They probably took that out. Uh, but uh, otherwise, it's trying to boot. It's got uh, like 64 mega RAM. Is that right? Wow. I'll have to peek inside and see. But, uh, yeah, I could put a hard drive in there and put uh, some version of Windows on it, 95 maybe, and uh, get this up and running, make a nice retro gaming computer out of it for somebody, clean up the case a little bit. Uh, this is where the PS2 keyboards and mice I get from them occasionally come in handy for putting together a retro system. That's nice. Okay, here's the other Pentium 3 computer I got. Um, it's up and running, too. Uh, yeah, I, I opened a case on this one. It's definitely, they've removed the hard drive. But, uh, look at this one. This one's got 512 mega RAM in it. And, uh, yeah. All I need to do is, uh, get new hard drives in these things and put some version of Windows on them. I'm thinking Windows 95 and I cut, you know, clean up the cases a little bit. With a little elbow grease, I got a couple of nice uh, retro gaming computers here that I can sell to somebody. Sweet. Oh my goodness. Look at all this. And this isn't all of it. This is not all of it. This is just like from the four, top four or five inches of this bin right here. Okay. Look at the stack of hard drives over there. Um, new in the box. Uh, what are their PS2 keyboard and mouse? Uh, Cat5 extension. I mean, new in the box, unused. We got Pentium 3 and Pentium 2 slot processors over there. Stack of them. And all these cards. All these cards. Again, they're just like from the top five or six inches maybe of this bin right here. It's cards almost all the way down. I mean, there's cables and other stuff in there. But it is mostly cards. All these cards came out of this bin. I am running out of bench space. And, you know, I probably haven't even got half of them out of there. Just, it's crazy, all the cards in this bin. There's a lot of SCSI controller, IDE controllers, NIC cards, video cards, modem cards. Uh, oh, there's some Sound Blaster cards. Uh, we got a couple of real Sound Blaster cards here, and we got a few, uh, I don't know, aftermarket ones here. Those will be good for my retro computing projects. If they work, I bet they do. They were probably just pulled out of these industrial computers because they didn't need sound. And uh, we got some funky cards over here. I don't know what they are. Um, let's see. I have no idea what this is. This thing is, it's got a massive heat sink on it. I mean, it just looks like a, a VGA card, but it's massive. Maybe an early one? I don't know. Uh, this one over here looks like it upgrades a uh, an old school... 8088 uh, IBM PC type computer to a 386 you pull your 8088 processor out and you plug this in its place and put this in the in the slot and you got yourself a 386 that's what that looks like I need to research that and see if these sell um, got some other weird cards here don't know what they are I'll have to research them most of them though they're just you know run-of-the-mill low-end video Nick um, hard drive controller type cards but there's some oddballs here and there's some really older ones that could come in handy for retro computing like this a floppy drive controller board right here for pc so and this i think this might be floppy drive controller too i think yeah so there's a few uh few useful cards here so and like i said i don't even have half of them out of here yet i mean i'm gonna be I'm just out of bench space. I'm going to be days sorting through all this stuff. And I got cables, 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 cables. Going to be running some wire up to the scrapyard, that's for sure. So, uh, wow. 
Well, I don't even know what some of this stuff is. I really have no clue what some of this stuff is. It's so old and so weird. I don't know. If you see something here that you know what it is, leave me a comment. Let me know. Some of this stuff will show up in my future videos. Some of it's going to get scrapped out. And uh, some of it will get scrapped out in future videos. And uh, some of this stuff may wound up being packed up in my mystery boxes, my mystery electronics boxes I sell. So uh, if you found this video at all informative, inspirational, educational, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. Check out my second channel, Electric Geek 64, where some of this stuff will appear too in retro computers using the, yeah, for use in them. And um, thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Boy, I got a lot of work to do here.